How to kill it as a video content creator, let's discuss the anatomy of an effective short form video. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. This is episode 305. You can catch all the show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, we started talking about, well, we talked about video for years, <laughs> but last year, or last year, last week, we talked yes. about uh, uh, short form video. Yeah. That was in episode 304. If you didn't watch that episode, go back over there and check out the show notes. A lot of information in the show notes. What are we talking about today? Well, today I want to break down what are the components of a great short video. We will get in a little bit to the different platforms because there are a little bit of time constraints for each of them. So you have to keep that in mind when you're building it. You know, last week we talked about three reasons people fail with video. And I did discuss one of the points in there that I'm going to cover again, which is about deciding on your content pillars. But I want to start out with you really have to choose your platform. Okay. So... I think the answer to that question of where should you be on social media for video specifically is where are your perfect clients? Yeah. Are they on all of them? Are they in, in, in essentially it's TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for that's where most of the video shorts for business are going to work for you. I mean, you could put it on LinkedIn or X Twitter, I personally don't think those are going to work as well. Those are different platforms. So the video was really Facebook Reels and Stories, Instagram Reels and Stories. TikTok is really a video platform, period, as is YouTube. YouTube, of course, has always had long form. And for several years now, they've been trying to you know, really get it with the shorts. Now, we're having a lot of success at WBNL Coaching with shorts, not as much on the other platforms, which is interesting. And then in my real estate business with my partner, Cosmo, we have a ton of interaction on TikTok and now finally started getting some business off of Instagram. And we don't get hardly anything off of YouTube, even though we do get views. Okay, so it's interesting. So where are your clients? Where are you? Which platform do you like? We're using them all, <laughs> okay? You're right. Our primary focus is TikTok, and then we will do things around that and repost our... We have an editor who will repost our videos to the other platforms for us. So we're leveraging that and outsourcing that because it's very time-consuming, but we post our own videos on our TikTok channel, as, as Matt and I do on our channels, okay? So... Pick it, pick them, pick one, repost, you decide. Uh, it's all about your time and where your clients are. And then the next thing I want to say is make sure you've optimized your business profile. If you're using Instagram, you know, YouTube, TikTok, whatever for business, then here's the quick tips. It needs to tell a prospective client who looks at your profile, who are you? What can they expect from you? What is it that you do? So don't have any cutesy thing in there. It's just like, tell people, what's the area you serve? What do you do? Is there a specialty right. that you have? You probably have to have your brokerage name if you're a real estate agent listening to this. I don't know a state that doesn't require you advertise who your broker is. You may or may not have to put your license number. That's a requirement in California, in uh, my state here. I think it is in Florida as well. And then I think you need a call to action. You need to put your phone number in there. Make it easy for people to contact you. Usually, the platforms will allow you to have a link with the exception of TikTok, right off the bat, the others will let you put a link in there that will allow people to click on it and go to your website uh, or use Linktree or direct me. One of these um, programs that allows you to have a lot of links in it. I really like that. We've we've used both. But you, if on TikTok, you have to have a you have to have a thousand followers before you can put a link. However, there's room for you to put your phone number. Okay. Or on our coaching TikTok, we just have wbnlcoaching.com. It's not clickable though, but you can tell people where to go. Right. Okay. So uh, next thing I'm going to say is do oppo research. Isn't that, isn't that the political term right That's now? That's correct. Oppo research. So go see just like any business, right? You want to do your SWOT analysis, if you will, but just yeah. really yeah. simply 
go on to the platform of choice and go see what other real estate professionals are doing in your area or not even in your area. Who is popular and why are they popular? And is it something that you like? The other thing you, when you do this, you'll find out what do you like and don't like. You might get ideas for content creation as well. There are all types of people out there doing well. And I'm just focusing on real estate here today, obviously. But there's all types. There's talking heads. There's people who that's every single time they're the talking head. And I can, I'm thinking of the lady Glenda, I think. It's real famous and she's in the Atlanta area. And I think she's off doing marketing now. She did so well on TikTok in her area in Georgia. Uh, now she's like on all the talk shows and so forth, right? The real estate talk shows or doing her own training on it. Uh, there's a lady also that does long form YouTube who really does great at it. So you go find out what they're doing and there's a formula and I'm going to cover some of that today, the anatomy of what needs to be in the, there is a very key way to lay out what's in your video and things that make it go viral on most platforms, slight tweaks for each platform. And you're not going to, all your videos are not going to go viral. So don't get that idea, but you should yeah. write your content in such a way that it's the best practices to get people to stop and watch. That's that's what I want to cover with you today. So, uh, hey Jim, before you jump, I have a I, I have a question before you jump in. Just to back up a couple steps here, talking about posting, uh, reposting um, video because I'm curious about this, I, and I haven't really ever seen any sort of stats on this because nobody is just on one platform. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Most people are on several platforms. I would think. Yeah, I, think I mean, I know we are. Maybe it's just because of what we do. But but I'm just saying, I'm wondering if you, is it wise to post the same video on the same day on all the platforms? Because is it redundant when your people are looking at it? I don't know. I think here's the reason. It's unless the people are going to your page, they may or may not be seeing you on any of the platforms because right. every one of the algorithms is different. So right. I follow people on TikTok and in my for you page, they might come up but when I and if I can't find somebody that I'm looking, what I'm trying to say is the people I follow and interact with, I don't always see them. I got you. Meaning that makes sense. It's a great, it's a great question. And I think it hasn't hurt us. So I, I don't know technically if somebody's listening and they've had a problem with that, you know, put it in the comments. Let us know if you're watching on YouTube or over on our blog page, <clears throat> our podcast page on WB Now Coaching, right. because there used to be a lot of stuff like that. Like Google didn't like, uh, you know, doing repetitive stuff and for posting for search engine kind of stuff like uh, duplicate content. I think that's in your head, too. Yeah, it's in yeah, my exactly. head. Well, I think I think the more the merrier if you're engaging on the platforms. OK, the only reason we cross post is because we actually want to be on those platforms right. but we focus primarily on tiktok but back to your point i used to be on instagram and facebook a lot but there's only so much time in the day so i prefer to follow the people i like to follow on tiktok for the things i like to follow mm -hmm. but now i because we're starting to engage more with clients on instagram and and facebook i find myself pulled back into that and you know it's different it's a completely different experience for me so all right. Anyway, great question. So we talked last episode 304 about decide on your content pillar. So doing that opposition research is going to help you decide what you think you would like. And I talked in that episode, you got to like to talk about it. You got to be good at it, you know? So just very briefly, it's going to be things like video tours, uh, spotlighting neighborhoods and communities area. We just did one yesterday, you know, four reasons to, we posted one, uh, no, I did an update because we're now in our second year and it was, here's your August, 2024 update on Heartland master plan in North Las Vegas. Okay. Because if anybody's been following us, we've done it before. Right. And, but it still hits some of the things, you know, um, the area that we we're wanting to talk about and so forth. So a day in the life is huge, especially if you are doing stories. So on reels and I mean, on Instagram and Facebook, there are reels, right? The, short form video. There's a spot for it on Instagram. You know, you got your page on Instagram and then you've got, you can click on the little video and you'll see the reels, right? And sometimes they, I think there's only so many seconds on the front page, your main page, and then you have to keep watching it on reels. Well, stories is very engaging for people, but it's time consuming to do stories. And what works well for stories for business people is the day in the life. Get up, shoot a quick video, but you have to be constantly doing it. Short, short videos, like 10 seconds, maybe, you know, less than 30 seconds, a quick story. Do you still follow stories when you, when you look at that? Stuff? 
You don't, nope. a lot of people get engaged with that. And we, we just had a conversation yesterday about how time consuming it is. But if it, if you are into that, that could be where you could excel. If you have the mindset of everything you're doing today, could there be two or three stories for you to post? But you got to do it every day. You can't just every once in a while do it. Um, so uh, weekly, monthly real estate updates, you know, what can you do in, in the area? We always will just take advantage of that. Cosmo took his kids and wife and they went to the minor league baseball, the beautiful Summerlin Las Vegas baseball park. And he did a great video just talking about it's a Tuesday night here. This is one of the things we love about living in this area. And he just got great shots. And it makes people go, wow. And then people are commenting, we love that park. Or, you know, it's great to go do this. And that's where you start to get engagement. It doesn't have to be about real estate all the time. In fact, it should be about what's right. it like to work, live, and play in your area. Think like that. And that's going to help you. Okay? So let's jump into the anatomy. Now the now that you got that all down and you're getting, a, you know, because it's overwhelming. But you just got to dive in there and go for it. All right. The anatomy of, a, of an effective short video. Not a long form. This is very similar to a long form, but we're going to stay on short form. And I'll break down the time frames in a second. The hook is the most important part. You'll, If you study any of this, the hook is the first three to four seconds that are the opening. Because you basically, people are scrolling. And you never are going to say, hi, it's Jan O'Brien, your, your favorite you know, Las Vegas realtor. No. Scroll, okay? Scroll right past. There has to be a hook that is going to be attention getting. And sometimes you can do it with a text overlay that's on your video, the first words that come out of your mouth. So we will do things like Las Vegas home buyers. Here's three things you need to know, blah, blah, blah. Las Vegas home sellers. Or we'll say four reasons to live in Henderson, Nevada. You know, or something like that, that you get out in four seconds, four to five seconds that is about your video, obviously, okay? It can't be a bait and switch. It needs to be about your video, right. and it needs to catch the attention of it. The hook is important. I'm going to tell you what can help you a lot with this when you're writing your scripts. We'll, it, we'll talk about scripts and the pre-production and post-production, the equipment in our final podcast on this series later, upcoming uh, podcast. But today I'm just talking about the theory behind how do you set up a post, a, a video post, okay? So the hook, I think everybody gets it. You know, if you're following anybody, you're, we're all on social media, pay attention to why did you stop and watch that video? Because I would say, I, we all scroll and something catches your attention. That's the hook, right? Does it, you do the same thing, Matt? I scroll, yeah, scroll, I'm scroll, not, and then I'm like, oh, I, okay, I'll, I'll watch that. Here's the funny thing. The most annoying hook from that I, I come across is I was this year's old when I found when I discovered this. Have you seen that one? Okay, it drives me I crazy. A trend. But it makes me watch it because it's like, okay, so he I'm gonna learn something that this person just learned, right? So it is so funny that it and, and I and I hear it. It's like the, the sentence does the structure of the sentence doesn't make sense. This bugs me, it bugs my ear, but I watch the video. Or at least I watch into the video to see what the what what they were learning when they were this year's old. And yeah. I have been a student of video marketing for years, and you can just go start Googling this stuff yourself or find yeah. it on TikTok or YouTube and find people who will teach you how to write a good hook. But honestly, it is things like that. But sometimes those things become trending on a certain platform, and that is actually a technique. Something that's trending and music that's trending right. can get people, can get, especially on TikTok, you can get uh, people start looking at you because you're in on the trend and you've got something funny or compelling to say around what I learned at five years. What's, what's the hook? It's what was that? I was this year's old. Oh, when I learned? Yeah. When I, whatever it yeah. is, like, you know, when I learned the it's, world. It's was classic. Around. You'll see marketing people say things like, I wish I had known this. You know, so it's like your your people have an issue. In marketing 101, it's provide the answer to whatever somebody's pain point or problem is. And in the hook, can you introduce them to something that's their pain point? Whatever, if you're going to do a video on how much money do you need to, to buy a home, you've got to think about how the person who's thinking about, do I have enough money to buy a home? How do you write the hook? Because it's for you. This particular video is... you. Did you know you could buy, you know, see, it's even too much to say that right. buying a home with no money down. Let's talk about it, you know, or lower, less than 3% down. Can you do that? You know, you, you got to, that's the hook. 
would, would see Matt said it perfectly. Well, I actually want to know what they're going to tell me. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm going to say something right now. I hate the <laughs> part one, part two. I scroll past those now, even if it's like, you're not going to believe what this person found. And then they tell you this whole backstory. And then they're like, comment for part two. And I just am like, no, I refuse. I don't even care what the answer is. I'm not going to watch the part two. So personally, but I don't like those. And I think a lot of people do that for a marketing thing. And I think it was okay in the beginning, but now it's overrun and everybody hates it. In my opinion, I don't know. Do you run across those? I, I haven't Follow seen those. Yet. It's a cliffhanger. It's very popular on TikTok. So here's the story and storytelling is important in videos. Storytell, even in a short form video, that's what it's all about. People are compelled by, cause you're telling a great story or you're teaching them something. So anyway, hook is everything. Then you need to provide your main content, which could be anywhere from five to 30 seconds. Because for the most part, we are talking about a minute video. 60 second yeah. might be the sweet spot. I will break down the various uh, content uh, length time for each of the platforms in a moment. And there's reasons to do different types and forms of videos. But for the most part, right around a minute. For example, YouTube shorts can only be 60 seconds, right. but they can be longer on the other platform. So you have to know what platform you're producing the video for. So the main content is where you're doing the storytelling, where you've got a pace and for short form video, why it works so well is people have shorter attention spans. You can't be boring. You have to get to the point, the hook, here's the points, here's the call to action and say it all in 60 seconds or less. Okay. Visuals and cuts and movements is what makes a lot of videos interesting. You can be talking head, which if you're good and maybe you look good, <laughs> you might have people even be more compelled to watch. I don't think you have to look good necessarily, but you have to sound good and you have to have a good story to tell and you have to have a pace about you in my opinion. So, that versus, you know, we'll do a lot of cuts. We'll do an intro. I do, you know, maybe I'm in one and then Cosmo's in one and then we cut to the next scene and that cutting and moving and captions and things is what keeps people maybe can not get bored. Okay. Those are things we'll tell you in the next podcast where we get into the little details. Okay. So that's the main. And then you finish up with like the conclusion. The conclusion is going to be maybe summarize really quick. If you did a longer video, here's what we just talked about. It, it could have a cliffhanger if you wanted to get them encouraged because maybe you're doing a series. So that would be the only time. Like I did a series that was like 20 something long, 20 videos long or so on how to buy. So I would might say in the next video, I'm going to cover blah, blah, blah. That's the appropriate place for watch the next video because it's you're going to learn from this one to that one. And then it's call to action. Call to action, we always will say something like, call or text to schedule your private showing. Call or text to set up a... And then on the video, we will have our call, text, and our phone number. You've got, you get, you've got to do that every single time. You've got to tell them what to do next. Call or text or follow us for more. We'll say... Some, our, we have a new tagline that we say at the end that will be call or text for more information or schedule your appointment or whatever. And then it will be follow for more real life in Las Vegas and Henderson. Follow for more real living, which is, you know, the cute little real estate life, you know, real life, real living. And on YouTube, came up with you can it. link to a you can you can link to a related video at the end of your short. So if yes. you're doing a series, you can actually link it. You can you can actually take them somewhere else as opposed to having them comment mm -hmm. to go to something else. Now I'm all about putting background music when I do my videos, when I do my tours. Maybe if I'm uh, I might I might even use it lightly, even if I'm doing an educational informative video. Mm -hmm. I think music adds a lot, and then all the platforms have trending music and trending sounds now i'm meaning um, music if i'm talking if we're talking we don't need a song with lyrics we need a instrumental music okay so that it just enhances the mood and so forth and i mentioned text and captions are important very important and they can be auto generated on a lot of the platforms and then i will talk about i use um i use cap cut for my video editing and we'll cover more of that in the next episode where we get into the details of equipment and how do you edit and so on you can also do some branding right you can uh, you know have things that you can add so that if you have a brand 
you know, or a call to action or something that you could add in post-production that will speak, but be subtle with it, right? It's, it's, it's all about the content and driving and educating and informing and providing people with the information that they're looking for. Cause that's really what happens, especially on YouTube. People will go to YouTube to type in what's it like to live in Anaheim Hills, mm-hmm. you know, reasons to move to Anaheim Hills. And that's why you make videos like that. And that's how people find the longer form videos, but you can do the same thing in a short form. If you're on YouTube, you should be doing both. Right. So the branding, and then of course, Matt talks about it a lot, the analytics. Analytics and performance is going to tell you as you start doing this, what's working and what's not working. Now, it's not always about the number of views. It's about engagement. So for example, we will get some viral videos that, uh, the one that comes to mind right now is this little seven second video I did when I was out looking at new homes in the Northwest a year and a half, two years ago two winters ago and the mountains were all snow capped and I just had a quick line. It was AI voice actually about, yes, you can, you know, live in Las Vegas and have snow capped mountain views. And it got like a couple hundred thousand views cause it was short. It was visually compelling. So mixing those in can help, but that is more entertainment. But what we find is the ones where we're teaching people about how to buy real estate or coaching or even some of the area tours will do well. But some of them are just providing the evergreen content. Does that make sense? We're providing the content that they can go back to if they go back through our feed. And, and or then you can actually, in most of the platforms, you can create playlists and it's the how to buy a home series or all the new homes that we've ever, you know, videotaped, or here's all the 55 plus areas as an example. You can definitely do that on YouTube and you can do it on TikTok. You can't do it so much on Instagram because those little spots are for stories. Uh, So anyway, your analytics and your re-looking, you know, take a look at what happens, what's working, and that will guide you into maybe defining what your pillars, uh, your content pillars are going to be. Okay. Okay. So last thing, let's just talk about the, the max amount of time and a couple little tips on each platform. So TikTok actually is 10 minutes. Now TikTok went from, you know, a minute to three minutes and then to 10, because what they tried to do a couple years ago, in my opinion, was they wanted to start being able to put more advertising a la YouTube. Mm -hmm. So they, they knew that they could only get more ads if they could have longer videos. So it's, you know, sometimes those work a little bit longer videos, but honestly, I still think the videos that are one to two minutes or less work well on TikTok. And uh, so, but just know that you can do longer form videos. Now I have people that I follow for learn for learning reasons that do five, six minute videos. And I will watch those because I, they're, I want to learn what they're teaching, but most of the time people aren't going to hang that long. Okay. If they want long form videos, in my opinion, they go to YouTube to get the 10 or 15 minute video on everything about Anaheim Hills. Okay. And that, and that's different. Okay. So the content is really trending challenges, works well, tips and tutorials, right? Storytelling behind the scenes. It's all that stuff, right? So Instagram reels, okay. And Facebook reels, 90 seconds. If it's longer than 90 seconds, it just cuts off. (laughs) Okay. So keep it to a minute to 90 seconds. And to me, Instagram has always been the visually aesthetic platform. Remember it started with photos and I think it still goes forward with the video, but it still needs to be you, right? So interactive content, all that good stuff. And then YouTube is 60 seconds. So shorts can't be longer than 60 seconds. And I still think they can be educational and so forth. Uh, Tips, all the same stuff we're talking about here for content will work on all the platforms. You've just got to figure out who you want to be, what you want to, what's the goal on the platform. And obviously the goal is to convert people that want to buy and sell houses with you. That's really right. for real estate. That's really what it is. And the only way to do that is to, to get clarity as you move along, kind of follow this anatomy. And then we'll finish this series with the diving into what equipment we use. We'll have a link to the recommendations of what we use and then talk about how to get ready, write your scripts how to go out and film, how do you film in your studio, a little bit of tips on that, and then some post-production editing tips and publishing tips. Good stuff. 
Great. All right. I always, you know, it's interesting when you, you start looking into, you know, monetization of some of these sites like YouTube, if you want to be an influencer and all of that. And this goes back to the analytics, which you were just talking about that, you know, you, to, you have to really study your analytics in there because in order to monetize on YouTube, not only do you have to have a thousand followers, but you have to have a certain amount of watch time, right? So if you are yeah. losing your people in the first two seconds of a, any video, whether it be a long form or short form video, you are not, you're, you're, you're not growing your watch time in throughout a year. You need to have 4,000 in the long form anyway, 4,000 hours of long form viewing in a year to monetize and get this number it cracks me up in order for you to monetize using shorts on youtube you have to have 10 million views <laughs> yes i mean wow. my god you know Cumulative. You, have to, you have to view the point is you have to be engaging right so yeah. watching what you are actually doing on these platforms is critical to mm -hmm. your success obviously you know not most people don't want to well, actually, everyone wants to be an influencer, I think, right, if you're on there. But really, your goal, especially when with real estate, is to actually attract clients and actually do real estate business as opposed to being a video star. So there's different ways to look at it. But still, watching your analytics is key to, um, you know, helping you thrive a little bit more and, you know, have, put out better content in the future. It's interesting. I agree. And the engagement comes from the you really almost have to guide viewers to tell them you know to call you so that call to action is part right. other techniques are that people use that i find compelling is what do you think comment your thought or if you're doing a video for example about check out this kitchen and then you're describing the kitchen is you know is this a kitchen you would buy tell me yes or no or posting a poll which you can do you know that's other ways that you can do engagement we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next episode because you've got to get the engagement and i'll also talk to you about once you've got the posts up the engagement happens from responding to comments and engaging with people and that is where the follow-up part comes up that will then nurture people to eventually work with you so we'll cover all that in our final episode on this series on how to be awesome at video shorts that's right. And if you want to get, learn more and get all the show notes that we talked about today, go over to wbnlpodcast.com. This was episode 305. And all that information is going to be there, over there for you. Now, next week on episode 306 of our podcast, we are putting together a little panel to talk about the NAR settlement uh, quagmire. I think that's probably a good word for this because it seems as though as we do more and more research and talk to more and more people that it's just a little bit different in every single market out there, what people are actually doing and how they are uh, reacting to the changes that are, are taking place now uh, because of the NAR settlement. So we have uh, Bob Brunswick from uh, Realty One Group uh -oh, Premier. Correct? Did I get that right? It's a real human group premiere. Yeah, in uh, Colorado, he will be there. So we're going to get the Colorado uh, viewpoint. We have Lori Namazi here in California, who has done a ton of work uh, with uh, NAR and CAR, especially, um, and has been a broker of record for a major real estate company here in Southern California. So we're going to get the California uh, viewpoint. Uh, Jan obviously knows what's going on there in in, uh, in Nevada. But we also have David Squire, um, who will uh, be bringing his expertise into the, the mix as well. So th three great guests are going to be joining us next week, uh, along with just uh, some other conversation. Because, uh, like I said, uh, everyone is treating this just a, a little bit differently. You it's going to add on perfect. To yeah. Perfect to talk about it because it's effective tomorrow as we record this on a Friday. It's effective the 17th and it's already rolled out in most places. And there's been a lot of reaction. I can't wait to talk to Bob in Colorado. I've heard some things about Colorado trying to say, you know, yeah, we, we don't think we have to do this. And I, so we're going to have to see how this all plays out. And I think it'll be very informative and we'll, we'll, and we'll continue it because this is a moving yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it is a movie. I, I do want to say this morning as I was getting ready, the president of NAR was on CNN and because that's and this is what I'm saying, it's the news of now, but I don't think right. it's there's so much going on. I think it's just going they're not going to talk about it again and he just basically covered exactly what the deal was that that the rules changed to be, you know, sell, you're going to just negotiate with your listing agent uh the your price. And he did talk, he did a great job talking about that and how the buyer side changes and the buyer may have to pay, but it could be put in the commission, could, the commission request could be put in the offer. And I was like, this is great. It wasn't like, 
how it first came out. It was educational and it was a short little clip and off next. So it's not going to be sensationalized, in my opinion, in the news. It will be locally with us, which is where I'm seeing. And then you just have to go about your business and see if things change or what happens or if new forms come out. And I think we're going to be all fine. So there it is. But let's see what the brokers around the country say. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing some different uh, viewpoints from different states, you know, and, and we'll have a good Excellent. conversation. Good, good conversation on that. That that we're gonna we, we will as we always do. We'll do our filming of that podcast on Friday, but it will drop on the twenty seventh. I believe was the date. Yes, Tuesday the twenty seventh. That will will drop. So you'll be hearing more about that. I'll be doing some more promotion of that uh, this week. But it's going to be a, a, a good. Um, Good panel discussion. Uh, also, I want to remind everyone, since we've been talking about video the last couple of weeks, we do have a free download over on our website, 150 uh, con video content ideas. Go over there to our freebies page at wbnlcoaching.com and uh, download uh, that uh, that little bit of inspiration for you. Uh, if you're having a trouble, yeah, any trouble you know, kind of establishing what your pillars are going to be as you're putting your uh, video plan into place. So 150 content ideas over at WBNL podcast, no, WBNLcoaching.com uh, on our freebies page. All right, Jan O'Brien, summer's winding down. My, my wife, the school teacher, went back to school today. I got to tell you, she she's ready to go back, but still that first day of school, mm, it's hard for everybody. Hard for the yep. kids hard for the teachers too she has the kids next week so they don't start till next wednesday but um you know gave her her little lunch and her you know, coffee as she walked out the door this morning and you know it's just another year starts so it's another I know a school lot of year going through that right now you know it's time to go back so i think everybody's in school now which definitely i think for our real estate industry means things will be picking up yeah there's always a lull in the summer there's a lot of you know until everybody get back to school then i think people are ready to you know, think about what they might do, you know, or, so we'll see what happens. All right. Everyone. I think it's going to well, be good. Yeah. Good stuff there. You know, in the meantime, get up, get out and uh, be forever wandering, but not lost. Absolutely. Find your freaking joy. All right. I'm ready. And the newsletter, which is and the newsletter, good. which is the time suck of the century. Mm. But it's engaging and people like it and I want to do it. So, all right, here we go. 